What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another interview of the Planet Podcast. Today, I'm joined by three-star quarterback from Pinson Valley and 2020 state champion, Zach Pyron. Did I say that correctly? Yes, sir, you did. Awesome. How you doing tonight, man? I'm doing, I'm doing good. good. How are you? I can't complain. We got a little bit of cold weather moving in. I think you're a little south of me, so hopefully both of us yeah, get yeah. a little bit of snow, maybe something uh, uncharacteristic of Alabama. But uh, but nonetheless, so I'll start off with uh, a little bit of your most recent news, uh, which I believe I saw today was you in, you were invited to the Under Armour All American Game. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about that? You know, maybe how that came to be. Was it something that you woke up this morning and saw, or was that something that had uh, maybe you'd been talked about prior to the day? Oh, uh, it's so last year I was invited to it. It's just like the camp series they put on, and it's uh. If you do good enough, you can eventually get invited to the game. But I was invited last year, and then COVID messed it all up, so I never got to do it. And then I woke up this morning, and I got an invite to it again, so I was pretty excited about it. Yeah, that's awesome. That's a game that you know is known for their uniforms and the great athletes, and you know even sometimes they have people commit on the spot. Um, yeah. yeah. But talking about commitments, you're not committed anywhere yet. You are listed as a three star on Rivals, um, and I believe two four seven as well. Um, talk to me a little bit about the recruiting process for you, how it's been so far, um, how it's been with COVID. I know it's a little bit different. You have offers from uh, JSU, North Texas, uh, Troy. I think Akron is your fourth. Do you have any other offers besides those? Miami, Ohio, UNC, Charlotte, Middle Tennessee, and uh, I think that's it. I think that's all of them. So seven or eight offers, uh, but yeah, talk to me a little bit about maybe, you know, what it's like as a recruit, you know, the mail you get on a daily basis, the phone calls, the texts, the, you know, things like that. Tell me a little bit through a day in the life of a Division One recruit. Uh, it's going good, you know. COVID uh, is affecting it a little bit. I mean, not, not where it's, like, affecting me a lot, you know. I mean, it would help if I could get on campus and get in front of coaches and do all that stuff. I probably – I probably have a little bit more than what I have now, you know, but I can't complain. You know, God's blessed me with what I have right now. And um, it's cool getting to talk to these coaches and just build relationships with all these guys. And uh, it's it's a fun process, you know, but I'm really just trying to find the perfect fit uh, somewhere that I can just be myself and somewhere with a good culture, um, just what fits my needs. Yeah, so you mentioned camps. Have you been able to get to any camps in the past that maybe uh, led the way for you getting an offer from that school, or do you have any camps that you could potentially attend this spring if COVID allows it, or maybe this summer? Uh, so going into my 10th grade year, I went to Tennessee, Jacksonville State, and Troy, and then Troy and JSU offered me uh, this year. So I don't know if the camps had anything to do with it. And if camps do open up, we do plan on hitting a lot of them. There's a bunch of camps that we, we already have planned out that we're going to go to. Yeah, camps not only about the competition, but it's a good chance. To, it's a good recruiting tactic for the schools as well. It's a good way mm-hmm. to get build relationships with them, uh, not just in a school environment, if you will, like you would on a recruiting visit, but you know, it's a, lot for you to, it's a chance for you to showcase your skills to them as well. Uh, but it, something it, it, I want to talk to you about is uh, I, I, have you lost a game in your high school career? You played three, two seasons at five, won two straight championships, come to Pinson Valley, you win another one. Uh, talk to me a little bit about how your high school careers went um, and just things like that. It's gone good. So my freshman year, I knew I had a chance to go in and start. And around the – before the first game of the year, I wasn't starting yet. We had another kid starting. He was actually the running back, and they moved him to quarterback. And uh, some stuff, some stuff turned around. I ended up starting that year in the very first game. I was starting, and I never lost a game for the next two years. And uh, then I moved up to Pinson, and I lost the first game of the of the year actually to uh, 7A Hewitt Trustwell. They're a powerhouse, and I eventually lost one more. But we went on to win the state championship. So I have a 42 and two record, but it's I can't complain. It's been good to me, and I have three three rings, you know. So. Yeah, in Pinson Valley, I believe they're 5A, right, with Hewitt being 7? Okay, 6A. Yeah, I think I got an interview with a guy from Pike Road after this. I think they may be 5A. Um, but nonetheless, yeah, like you said, you won 6A state championship this year. Um, so talk to me a little bit, you know, a little bit about that state championship run that you had through the playoffs. I think you all won eight, 8 or 10 straight, something like that, to finish out the year. Um, how were you guys able to bounce back from that midseason loss that you just mentioned? Um, and then what, you know, how's it looking ahead into the next season? Um, so 
coming in after that midseason loss, you know, it was a brand new coaching staff for everybody. And then me coming up, it was kind of a, it was more of an eye opener for us to see that, that we just all have to buy in. We just all have to start working harder and doing, doing better everywhere. And when everybody started getting the same mindset and clicking on the same page, we started going on a big run. And uh, it led us, it led us on to the state championship. You know, everybody had the same goal in mind. Everybody was working hard at practice, pushing each other. And uh, that's what, that's what we finally, finally started to get clicking. That was an important thing for us. Yeah, the uh, the the loss you mentioned was fourteen thirteen to Ramsey, um, and Ramsey's not no you know they're no pushover team or anything like that. I believe they are top five in the state, uh, or were at that point of the game. Um, how how was that game kind of affect you guys as a whole? Like, was, do you think that you guys just played bad that game, or was that just two great you know powerhouses kind of going at it? Uh, I think it was two great powerhouses. I also don't feel like we played great, you know, but. Um... You, it's kind of hard, you know. Ramsey has a nose guard committed to Alabama and a linebacker committed to Florida. So when you have two of those guys on the defensive side, it really changes things, you know. And they they definitely made the game hard on us, you know. But I did feel like we didn't execute like we were supposed to. We missed some plays here and there, and just we didn't we 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 didn't play the whole game like we should have, and we didn't play good. You know, we had a good opening drive and a good last drive of the game, but in between we didn't we didn't play like we should have. So we definitely wanted that one back, you know, but. You can't do that, and you got to play good all the time. So, yeah, and y'all didn't get a uh, uh, say another shot at them in the playoffs, did you? Mm-mm-mm. And you mentioned them having a ton of uh, Division One talent on on their roster. I know you guys have a, like, a couple guys on your team as well that have more mm-hmm. offers than just you. Um, talk to me a little bit about one person on your uh, team that maybe we should look out for this coming season as maybe a breakout player who's kind of kind of slept on you know maybe he don't even have an offer or somebody like that somebody that your team kind of values that uh that the outside world maybe underappreciates i mean i think we definitely got a bunch of them you know pinson pinson has kids everywhere but somebody i'll say is uh mike sharp he's our running back he was um he was sharing the load a lot throughout the year and then the one of the guys got hurt so he kind of took over in the playoffs you know he uh now he has two offers he got offered by arkansas state and middle tennessee but we still feel he slept on a lot, and then we have another kid. His name is uh, BJ. He's about he's like a big six five receiver slash DN. He just got offered by Arkansas State today. I think he's gonna have a breakout year. But we got a bunch of young kids that um, shared some reps that are gonna be number one guys this year that I think are gonna surprise a lot of people. Yeah, well, something I want to uh, last thing I'll leave you with here is uh, you know you're headed into your senior year, coming off three state state championships, you know. All, Obviously, the expectation is to finish four for four with four rings, something that I don't know if many people ever uh, can accomplish that feature. Uh, but what's something, you know, that you think you need to improve on as from yourself uh, heading into this season that may, you know, in the end lead to more maybe power five offers for you? I think just my IQ. I think I have a good football IQ, but you can always improve it. I would like to get better at uh, pre-snap and post-snap uh, adjustments and things you know being able to see things pre-snap and then during the play be able to make more right reads you know and then just just being more of an athlete because I was I'm a, I'm a good athlete but I didn't use that enough this year I don't feel like so just me trying to help the team more in ways and then also just being a better leader I've always been a good leader but you can always be better and with me being a senior that's going to be really important this year is being a leader and making sure I lead by example yeah, you mentioned football IQ and how important of a thing that is, uh, not only just from, from a high school level but to a college level. You know, the biggest thing that people talk about is the game speed and how the game speed changes um, from you know, high school to the next level. And being able to have the game slow down for you is the biggest thing. Uh, and to, to me, in my opinion, I think football IQ is probably the most underappreciated uh, feature of a player being recruited or just a player in general. Um, cause I think football IQ goes, goes a long way. So like you said, you know, I hope that maybe you're able to strengthen your IQ in the next six mm-hmm. months before the season gets here. Um, but nonetheless, I, I wish you nothing but the best in your, uh, four for four, four straight state championship run. Uh, I'll probably get down to Pinson Valley at some point and, uh, check out the game. It's only about an hour South for me. Um, so, yeah, you know, again, nothing, nothing but the best for you. Good luck. And, uh, appreciate you joining me. Yes, sir. sir. Thank Thank you so so much. much. I'm glad Glad you had me on. on.